Hi, my name is James Harkins. I'm a longtime programmer of algorithmic music, um, mostly using Super Collider, but uh, also using Pure Data and Max from time to time. I'm making this video because recently I saw a, uh, a video on YouTube um, talking about graphical programming for music and making a direct comparison to Super Collider. Um, specifically, this video recommends graphical programming because text-based programming may seem scary. Um, well, and here is, I had to laugh at this because the uh, background image looks like C++ code, which is probably the scariest language in common usage. So this is not exactly a good example to uh, level the playing field here. Um, so this, this is an interesting question. Uh, I find in my classes that students respond much better to graphical languages. Um, in my last cycle of interactive multimedia, probably uh, a quarter of the class or more actually made a sincere effort to, to learn pure data. I have used Super Collider in other classes and found that the response was much worse. At the same time, I have a really strong impression that graphical programming just takes a lot longer to execute, to just physically execute. Um, and it, this leads to a question for me that if it is kind of analogous to running around the block with uh, ankle weights on, um, what, what do we actually get out of it if we position graphical programming as the solution to the difficulty of, of text-based languages. So this video isn't going to answer that question in a, in a systematic way, but, one, but I thought, let's try a simple test. Right? Let's choose a basic standard synthesizer design, implement it side by side in both languages, and then we'll try to make a rough estimate of the difference in the, uh, the, the, the time it takes. Um, so before diving into the demo screencast, uh, I just want to give you a, a, a quick look at the synthesizer topology, um, a, a very standard design with uh, multiple detuned oscillators, apply a filter with an envelope, and apply a volume control also with an envelope. Um, Anybody who has worked even with VST synthesizers will recognize this as a quite normal design. This is something we would want to be straightforward to implement in pretty much any programming environment. Also, just a preview of the, the programming strategies. Um, I am really averse to manual labor, and you know, you'll see many tutorials for Pure Data and Max where they will take a structure and copy it you know, four times, five times, and then draw lots of, uh, lots of wires um, by hand. I really don't like doing this. Um, Pure Data's clone object is, is quite a nice way to get around this. Um, and I will actually use two layers because I also want polyphony. I want to have more than one note at the same time. Um, in Super Collider, um, you won't actually see the five sawtooths written because there is a, a, a trick in the language called multi-channel expansion. If I give five frequencies to the sawtooth unit, it will expand that into five units. Um, another feature of Super Collider is that polyphony is um, more or less implicit in the design. You simply create notes when you need them. Um, so you don't have to pre-allocate. So that, that makes the polyphony part of it much easier to implement in Super Collider just by design. I suppose somebody could argue here that it makes it a very biased test case and this is going to make graphical programming look bad. Um, I'm gonna continue with this test because as I said, this is a standard synthesizer design a programming environment that doesn't handle it well could be considered to put some limits on the user. Uh, without ado, I, I will, let's just start the screencast. Also note that I'm speeding up the video by a factor of about two 
because it's a little bit boring to watch at normal speed. Okay, so we have Super Collider on the left, Pure Data on the right. Uh, while I'm arranging the window size, I started laying out a synthesizer definition template in Super Collider. I'm starting with the random detuning value. Here you see in Pure Data, I have to make uh, integer random numbers and then map them into a range, whereas Super Collider just lets me specify the range. Um, so you, you would see then on the Super Collider side that sometimes I am pausing to let the Pure Data side catch up um, and that this, this time is actually accumulating kind of rapidly. Okay, so inside the uh, first window on the right, there is the oscillator and the random detuning. Now this side uh, is going to um, first use the, uh, the single oscillator within a clone object to make five of them. So that's the, the five times duplication. Uh, there is the filter being added and um, you know, on the super collider side, we're using a resonant low pass filter, pure data using VCF. Um, here I got a little bit out of order because I started making the envelope uh, gate on and off switch, but then I went down to actually create the amplifiers at the bottom, um, which is being implemented in super collider inside the out.ar. Okay, now Pure Data building the amplitude envelope. It's an ADSR envelope, which requires one message for the attack decay part and another message for the release part. Um, Super Collider, I can just write env.adsr, put in the values, and that's done. So um, now I'm tweaking things around. Um, filter envelope, I'm just going to use a simple attack and release. Um, it gets a little, uh, you know, in, in PD here, I want to map the straight line envelope onto exponential frequencies. I'm just using a kind of standard formula that I use. Um, you know, in pure data, I'm getting some benefit out of the fact that the uh, envelope generator has a built-in uh, exponential shape, so I don't have to, uh, to, to re-implement every time. Okay, um, in Super Collider, to make audio, we need to boot the audio server. I'm making an analog to that on the right side by turning on uh, Pure Data's DSP. Okay, now, now there's the clone for the, the polysynth. Um, and, you know, it's good practice always to test what you're doing. So I'm just going to create some note on note off messages. Now here is where I made mistakes on both sides. Um, let's talk about the Super Collider mistake first. Uh, in Super Collider, I did not tell it to use the new, um, the, the, the synthesizer that I had just defined. So when we actually get to that, it will play with the wrong sound. What's happening now on the right-hand side is that I wanted to record the pure data audio, and I actually have to build that in the patch, uh, whereas in Super Collider, you can see on the right, I just simply choose record from the menu. Um, the pure data side did not actually make any sound at this point. Um, it's a little bit of an embarrassing mistake, and it took me uh, about 30 seconds here to figure out what the problem was. Uh, I'm leaving this in because this is part of the process. If there is anything in a programming environment, oh, and there it went. Um, if there is anything in a programming environment's interfaces that uh, can trip you up, then this will cost you time. So it's worth actually showing that. Um, okay, now we're building a simple sequencer, um, just a random sustain time and a random MIDI note number. I'm already done writing the same thing in Super Collider, but now in Pure Data, I have to actually produce one, produce note releases, two, allocate them polyphonically, 
um, and then pack them back up into a message that I can use with clone. And again, it's quite, you see in Super Collider that I made the same mistake twice. So that's uh, an interesting thing. Um, the synthesizers did play correctly in the end. So conclusions, the measurement is not accurate. Um, and that's fine because this is not a formal human computer interaction analysis. Um, I'm going to estimate takeoff about 60 to 90 seconds, and we may be pretty close. Um, even with that correction, pure data took somewhere between four to five minutes longer to build the same design, the same sound. Um, so this, this is something I, I think about for larger projects. If this is just one layer, maybe your project has 30 different audio layers. If every one of those takes four or five minutes longer, that's a couple of extra hours. This actually will add up very quickly. Responding a little bit to the question about bias, um, if, for example, I wanted the notes to be played in response to uh, events coming in through a microphone, for example. Um, here's, here's a case where it's actually more straightforward in pure data because you just connect the audio to the analysis and directly to the note player. Super Collider requires the audio engine to send a message to the language and then the language to send a message back to play the new note. It's a bit more convoluted and I think this is part of where Super Collider gets the reputation for being really, really difficult. But I did want to at least show this for fairness, right? To show that Super Collider is very well suited to parallel signal chains and polyphony. But there are other use cases where it's not ideal. Um, but the last thought I want to leave with is if it's inconvenient to do, then in your creative work, you will do less of it. Um, and I have a general feeling, don't, don't take this as a scientific survey, but I have an impression that the types of synthesis and the types of algorithmic composition that people try to do in Super Collider is more ambitious than what I usually hear from Max and Pure Data. I would like people to consider this when choosing programming environments for music. The initial approachability may not actually scale up to larger and more complex projects.